Hi everybody, this is Dr. Omar Al-Qaisi. Today I will be explaining a very important topic in ECG, which is a type of arrhythmia that frequently asked uh, in medical school, and you will see it very frequently in the medical practice, especially in emergency uh, department in the hospital. So you have to have it, and you have to understand it, because this is a very frequently asked in questions, especially in USMLA, form and croc questions, and also you will see it in medical practice. So so I will explain it in a briefly focusing on the uh, diagnosis of this type of arrhythmia and how you will see it in ECG. The name of the arrhythmia is supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, or proxesimal supraventricular tachycardia. Before I will start writing everything, I have to explain the mechanism behind this type of arrhythmia. Well, there is a lot of stories about the mechanism of this arrhythmia and why it's called supraventricular. I will explain it now. As we know, in heart, uh, the electricity start or the action potential starts from SA node, then moves to AV node. And the AV node will give it to the um, bundles uh, and then to the Burkin G fibers. So that's the way uh, the normal heart will work. SA node will give electricity to the atrium and then to the AV node, and the AV node will give electricity to the ventricle through the bundles and through the Burkin G fibers. But in this type of arrhythmia, there will be a problem in the AV node, leading to what we call a re-entrant circuit. So there will be electricity moving from the AV node to the AV node. And that will lead to what we call it an AV node re-entrant re circuit. And that circuit will lead to this type of arrhythmia, the supraventricular arrhythmia. Because the AV node will fire again and again and again, and then it will lead to arrhythmia. So why we didn't call it a ventricular arrhythmia, like ventricular tachycardia or uh, another type of ventricular arrhythmia? Because it's not originated in the ventricle. It just originated above the ventricle. That suggests the name, supra which means above the ventricle, supraventricular tachycardia, basically from the AV node itself, or sometimes from ectopic focus near to the AV node. I won't uh, go to the to go too much to the details of this mechanism, but in simple form, it's just a re-entry circuit to the AV node. Sometimes it happens because uh, there is an extra pathway, extra pathway coming from the atrial. Uh, part to the ventricular part in the right side of the heart or maybe sometimes in the left but especially in the right side of the heart this extra pathway uh, we well basically this happens in a syndrome called wolf parkinson white syndrome I won't explain it in this video, but in a simple way with Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, you will get a lot of supraventricular tachycardia, this type of arrhythmia. Why? Because this extra pathway coming from the atrium to the ventricle and normal hearts, we don't have a pathway coming through uh, this pathway or through the atrium to the ventricles. Just there is one pathway going from the AV node to the bundles. That's it. There is no extra pathway. But in this case, the electricity will come through the AV node to the bundles and through the bundles to the Burkhenji and then goes back to this extra pathway, back to AV node, causing also a re-entrant circuit and that will lead to supraventricular tachycardia. Basically, it's a re-entrant circle through the AV node that will lead to supraventricular tachycardia. This is a mechanism in a simple form. When I tell you there is arrhythmia originated from SA node or AV node, this is a regular arrhythmia. Why? Because those nodes, they beat in a regular fashion. So whenever you get arrhythmia basically originated from this nodes, it will be a regular arrhythmia. So what is the feature of this arrhythmia? Basically, it's a regular arrhythmia. What I mean, what I mean by regular arrhythmia? I mean there is a very distinguished period between each beat that is regular. It's not a regular rhythm we cannot predict the next beat. No, here you can predict when the next beat will be. So it's very regular rhythm. But the important thing to notice here is there is a tachycardia because this is arrhythmia. This is not a normal way the AV node is wor working. Because of this circuit, it's gi giving more impulse and getting more tachycardic. So basically, the rate will be between 150 to 200 50 beats 
beat per minute. So this is basically the rate of this type of arrhythmia. So what about the rhythm of this arrhythmia? It will be a regular rhythm. This is a very important one. I will put some star here. This is very important one because if the question tells you it's irregular, you have to uh, take out of your mind supraventric tachycardia. You will think about a lot of other arrhythmia happens in the atrium like atrial fibrillation, which is a regular rhythm. But this one will be regular. So this is a very regular rhythm. And if we want to draw it, as we draw it in ECG, let me try to draw you what this arrhythmia will look like on an ECG. So if we draw it in this way, in this fashion, so it's not 100% perfect, perfect drawing, but just to illustrate the idea. We, I told you that this uh, type of arrhythmia, it's a regular arrhythmia. What I mean by regular arrhythmia, there is a clear distance between R and R wave, that's always will be the same. Well, I maybe draw it here a little bigger or uh, uh, it's not that, that, but that much of uh, same uh, distance, but let's consider that it's the same distance. Whenever you measure this distance will be the same for the rest of the, uh, well, of the ECG because this is a regular rhythm. So always you can predict when the ne next QRS will happen because this is a regular arrhythmia. This is not a regular arrhythmia. Next important feature, if I ask you now, where is the P wave? You cannot tell me because there is actually, you cannot see the P wave. You only see T wave, T wave, T wave, T wave. That's happened because the arrhythmia starts and originates from AV node, goes back to AV node. So it will bury the P wave inside the T wave. There is a P wave actually in this ECG, but you cannot see it because it's buried under the T wave. So there is P here, and there is a P here, and there is P here, but it's buried under the T wave. So if the question asks you, or the question tells you that the P wave will be buried under, under the T wave or preceding T wave. So this is another distinguishing feature for this type of arrhythmia. First of all, the heart rate will be increased basically from 150, sometimes into 250 beat per minute regular heart uh, rate. And this is very important one. And the uh, P wave will be buried under the next or the preceding T wave. PR interval, well, you cannot be able, not able, to measure it. You will not be able to measure it because you cannot understand where is exactly the P wave to measure the distance between P wave and the uh, Q wave. So the PR interval, you cannot measure it basically. And what about QRS? In this type of arrhythmia, because this is atrial arrhythmia, you have to understand this. This is atrial, not a ventricular arrhythmia. So QRS represent the ventricle. P wave represent the uh, atrium and the PR interval represent the delay and the conduction of AV node. So here you will find a problem now in P wave, but the QRS will be most of the time normal QRS. There are some exceptions in this case, but I won't uh, go to the details. So basically now you can uh, understand this type of arrhythmia. There's increase in heart rate. It's very regular arrhythmia. This is very important uh, idea. You have to understand this is regular and the P wave will be buried under the T wave. No, uh, the PR interval, you cannot distinguish it and a QRS will be normal. If you find this criteria for a type of arrhythmia happen through the uh, um, ECG, you can understand this is supraventricular tachycardia. Sometimes it happens to individual because a problem they have it. Sometimes they have extra problem like Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. Sometimes because of a drug and some uh, chemical compound, excessive stress, caffeine use, they will have this type of arrhythmia.